Uh, I just have a quick thought. I've been very dry, very dry. Uh, just, if you've never been through that, you, you just, you read your Bible, seem like from cover to cover, you're back and forth and back and forth and nothing seems to jump out and you just say, Lord, what's wrong with me? Why can't I grasp anything, not anything? But I finally, uh, today I just said, well, I was reading Psalm 43 where David said, why are you cast down on my soul? Uh, the Lord is the help of my countenance. And so I just started thanking the Lord. Lord, it don't matter if I, I, I whatever, I, I just thank you. And I'm, I have a thought that about, uh, and I think it's kind of confirmed by what everybody's been talking about prayer. And it's about prayer, really. And it's been said, Brother Chris made a statement that God will go at any lengths to prepare us for. Uh, he will do whatever it takes. And But let me ask you a question. Will you do whatever it takes? Uh, what... What about you? What about me? What about we? We know God. We talk about God answering prayer and that we pray. And, and uh, But uh, what will motivate us to pray? What will it take? What will it take for us to pray? You know, we, we uh, I, I don't know. I, I was reading in Judges chapter 6 where the scripture says that the Lord allowed the Midianites to come and uh, just wreak havoc on Israel. And the Bible says when they cried out to the Lord, it took the Midianites for God's people to cry to him. I don't know, but uh, to go back to what Brother Chris said, do you believe God will go at any lengths to get his people to pray? I think he will. He, we saw a glimpse, we've seen a glimpse of the hand of God moving with COVID. If you don't believe that, then you've missed the whole thing. If, if, you, you, if you don't believe that God is trying to shake us and prepare us for more that's ahead, y'all, I'm just telling you, this was just a beginning. This is just a beginning of what what, I don't know what will happen. I don't know what's ahead. But we, we, it's time. It's time for us as God's people to shake off all incumbents, encumberments. It's time. It's time to, to uh, I'm not trying to be gloomy, but it's time to be serious. If there ever was a time to see what's ahead and, and, I, and, I, and I think it, I want to look to Luke 18. Luke 18 is very familiar with, with, with all of y'all. And before I read this, would you pray with me? Dear Father, I ask with all my heart, Lord, I thank you with all of my heart, and I ask you to please bring this word. I, I don't, Lord, I don't want to get in the way. I don't want to hinder your word, you know my thoughts, you know my heart, you know my tendencies, Lord, you know my my pride, the foolishness of, Lord, please bring this word to us in a way that you only you can do it and help us to see the, the urgency of the hour and the need for your people to pray, the need for myself to pray. Lord, please give us an unction to understand your word tonight. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, it says in verse 1, I'm going to read out of the New King James. Then he spoke a parable to them that men ought always, always ought to pray and not lose heart. Okay? Always pray and not lose heart. Think, get that in your mind. When you're tempted to lose heart, to be weary. And that's what losing heart is when you get weary. The thing like what Miss Regina's weary. She's weary of the, of the physical difficulty, the mental part. The, uh, this, that, and sometimes the physical turns into the mental and that is even worse because you get in this big hole and you just can't, 
and you lose heart. You lose heart. You, you pray and you pray. And some, some of you may have prayed for things for years. You can pray for things for years and years. And, and I wish I would have brought them, but there's Luis Palau. Have you ever heard of him? He wrote the greatest thing on how God answers prayer. There's five things. And it's wonderful because it's one of them like says, not now because I love you too much. And every one of them is an answer. It's an answer. He's going to answer it. But it's in his time and for how he wants best for you and I. And, it's, and I wish I could. But if you look them up, you can look them up on, online. And it's five th ways that God answers prayer. It's very, and so God answers prayer. So let's look at this. So we don't want to lose heart or faint. That word really means faint. And, and so to illustrate this, the Lord says there was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God nor regard man. <clears throat> now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him saying, Get justice or avenge for me, or avenge me of my adversary, I think the King James says. Or get justice for me. In other words, help me. In other words, this widow, she has no one else and, <clears throat> but the unjust judge. That's what she has. And the Lord is illustrating here this judge, he don't have anything invested in her. He has no reason to, up to this point, to care about her problem, you see. But Jesus is illustrating something here. And he would not for a while. But after her word, he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, and this is the, the, the word I want, lest by her continual coming, over and over, right? Isn't that what that means? She's coming. She's not going to stop. She's not going to stop. So the Lord is saying, she's gonna, this guy says she's going to weary me, and I don't want to mess with her, and so I'm going to go ahead and, and give her what she wants. I'm going to go ahead and help her. Okay, so to, to, how does it, what does this have to do with God? This man didn't even believe in God, yet he's willing because of her persistence, her consistency, coming back, coming back, coming back. And the Lord said, hear what the unjust judge said. Listen to what he said. What did he say? Yeah, he, I, I, I'm, I'm going to help her. He says, I'm going to help this woman because she's worrying me to death. Right? If that's kind of a bad way to put it, I guess. But this is, the Lord said, hear what he said. Now hear what I say. And shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him? Now those two words is what I think we often miss is the day and night. That's continual prayer, is it not? What would cause a person to pray day and night? Pain. What else? Love? Sadness? Fear for a loved one. Sometimes the agony of our loved ones is, is worse than having... You would even take it on yourself if you could lift it off of your loved ones. That's true, isn't it? And so... That these things that you've just mentioned would cause us to pray day and night until we get an answer. And may I say, it's not a it's not a three second whisper. It's it's an agonizing prayer of Lord, help me. Here lately, that's been my biggest prayer. Help me, Lord, help me, help me. Over and over. Help me. And shall not God or shall God not avenge his own elect who cry out day and night to him, though he bears long with them? I tell you, he will avenge them speedily. Jesus, red letter. Nevertheless, even though I've just said this to you, you know this now, he will avenge speedily 
when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on earth? Will he? Now the scripture tells us Jesus himself said that in the last days men's heart would fail them for fear of things coming on the earth. Didn't it say that? So it said, and it also tells us that in the days ahead, that except the Lord shorten those days, no flesh would be saved. Right? So we know it's going to get worse. We know that. So our motivation. And you may not have a problem. You may not, may not have any issues. And that's good. You should rejoice in that. Because just wait. Just wait. You know? Uh, I don't ask for adversity. I don't pray that, Lord, send me adversity uh, so I could pray more. I, that's, not, that's not what I do. But, but what I'm saying is, I, I do remember a time in my life when I said, I don't care what it takes. It's time that it wasn't but a couple months after that, buddy, I thought the bottom fell out. But I, that's what I asked the Lord, and it turned out to be some of the greatest blessings of my whole life. But I, I couldn't see it at the time. You know, I couldn't grasp it. I, there were times when I said, oh, God, I can't take it. I can't take it. But the Lord, the Lord knows when, when, we, when he asked that, and he's so gracious and kind and merciful, so my, this is very quick. I, I just want to ask you, will you pray day and night? We can either volunteer for this thing or God can give us a reason. I'd rather choose number one myself. Uh, I want to uh, look to another scripture in Hebrews and then I want to go to Joel after Hebrews. Hebrews is a very familiar scripture. Hebrews 4. Okay. Uh, Hebrews 4.14. 4, Reasons for prayer. Okay. Reasons for prayer. Seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession or profession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Okay? May I say another, another reason for prayer is being tempted. <coughs> temptation. Being assailed from the enemy with temptations and uh, failures, uh, Falling short, uh, stumbling uh, it is, is some of the uh, most desperate prayers in my life has been in the midst of just failure, just utter failure. And, and, and temptation, <clears throat> that in the fires of temptation, being hounded continually by, by the tempter, something over and over uh, 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 when, 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 the, when, the, when the furnace gets hot, and you need relief. Okay, because we have this high priest, and because he was tempted just like as we are, and he's faithful, and he understands our weakness, he understands our, our frailties, then verse 16 says, let us therefore, okay, because that should move us to something. Right? It should move us to something. We can either faint and lose heart, like as Jesus said in, in Luke 18, or we can come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, the enemy, he doesn't want this. He would rather you, you know what he does? He, he, is a, he will make you feel so guilty and bad about yourself, you really won't pray. He wants, you to, he wants to inflict upon you so much guilt and condemnation that you really don't come boldly. Because why would you come boldly if you're sinful? You know, the, the enemy says, you can't come to God. You can't come like that. How can you come, how can you say, how can you come boldly in prayer when you've got all this filth? You see? 
You remember, in, I think it might have been Zechariah or Malachi, one of the prophets said that I saw Joshua, the high priest, and Satan beside him, there to resist him, and he had on filthy garments. You remember that? Why would a priest have on filthy garments? It was, priests were supposed to have unblemished garments. He had to wear a certain kind of linen underneath his priestly robe. It was a, it was a vile thing. But the Lord cleansed him, and the Satan was at his right hand to resist him. You remember that? See, Satan will resist you and, and, and want you to look at your clothes, your, your dirtiness. But no, go boldly to the throne of grace to find help that we obtain mercy. God is merciful. He's merciful and kind. I love the King James and the New King James. I love the word mercy. I'm not, I, I, I read all the versions, most all of them. Uh, some of the versions change it to loving kindness or something. And that's okay, but I love mercy. It's something about just, Lord, have mercy. The Lord has mercy on us. It's wonderful. Now, now we, 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 we all know this. We all know this. I'm not telling you anything new. But if, if we will pray, if, if I will pray, I, I've had to put myself in this because I don't consider myself, uh, I want to pray more in my life. I, I fall asleep a lot praying. You ever do that? I'm just be honest with you. The Lord, it's like the, sometimes I think the Lord says, my goodness, will you stay awake for, for 10, 15 minutes? And I want to, I, my desire is, Lord, I want to spend time with you. I want to not just ask you for stuff. I want to know you. I want to, I want to be close to you. I want to feel your presence. I want to draw near to you. I just don't want to just give you my list every time I come. Okay, Lord, do this. That's not what I want in prayer. But there's, a, there's something, I think, that God's telling us in, in Joel, in the prophet Joel. Joel, Amos, Obadiah, right? And I think it's uh, what I'm looking for is the uh, chapter 2. You know, the, the, there's a day of the Lord coming. Do you know that? And it's not a good to be a fun day. Uh, the scripture tells us that if we, if we think that it's going to be a good day, we're deceived. We're deceived. It's going to be a hard day. I don't know about all the, I don't know how, who, when that day is coming or maybe the church will be gone. I do not know that. But sometimes... In fact, verse 2 says it's a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. And what he was given was a warning of the enemy coming in. Do you believe that the enemy is already coming into our nation with, I mean, it makes me think of Revelation when he knows his time is short and he comes in great wrath and I, and he's coming against our children. He's coming against the knowledge in their minds. He's, I, I even heard again the other day, or a young man said, I tried that, I tried to pray, he didn't hear me. I'm done with that. I'm done with it. And that's, it is very prevalent in, in young people. They said, I tried praying, it didn't work, you see. And so we're, we're seeing a, 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 a falling away like the Lord spoke of, of, of just even, and you know what I pray in this, you may think this is crazy, but I pray it, I pray it, I'm not going to stop. I pray for the Holy Spirit to go down the hallways of the schools. I pray the Holy Spirit will go in the hallways and begin to convict teachers and convict children. And I, I pray that God will, and, and will move in the hearts of young people to, 
to be stirred to the point of holiness and righteousness again. There'll be a hunger. There'll be a hunger once again for, for God and for the things of God, not just a pushing him out, but a bringing him in. I pray that God will do that and move. In, in all my grandkids' schools, I pray for that. And don't think just because it's a Christian school, it's good. There's some terrible things that go on in there, terrible things, terrible voices. We, 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 we just went to a, a, a ball game where Christian, a Christian school, vile things coming out of the kids' mouths. Terrible parents, terrible too. Hollers like me holler. Terrible parents hollering in the stands and grandparents. But I want to get to this part here now, so I'll be done. Y'all are ready for the Super Bowl, I guess. Do you know when kickoff is? I don't even know. All right. Now, this is listen. Now it talks about this day of being very gloomy and the enemy coming in. But notice what verse twelve says. Now, therefore, okay. If if uh, considering this day coming, considering the enemy is going to come in and just take over, that's what he just told him. Now, therefore, uh, you know, I remember reading uh, a couple years ago this Boko Haram group coming into a village and the people told their kids, they knew that, you know, they're, they're coming and they take the girls, they just take and they just kill. They're just awful. And the, they, you know what they were telling their children? Don't deny Jesus. Don't deny Jesus. Don't deny Jesus. They're coming. They're coming. Can you imagine that feeling? You ain't got nowhere to go. And the enemy's coming in. You don't know if they're going to take your children, your grandchildren. They're going to kill your husband. They're coming. Don't deny Jesus. Don't deny Jesus. Therefore, if you knew that was happening, you and I might do this. Therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart. With fasting, with weeping, and mourning. I'm, I'm, I'm like Brother Chris. I'm, I'm, I love to laugh. But I'm telling you, there's a time for mourning. The church is not a casual place. I, I think it's a place that we should have joy, should have the unspeakable joy, full of glory. But there's a time, there's a time for mourning. There's a time for rending your heart it says, and not your garments. You know what the Lord is saying? I'm tired of seeing ripped clothes. It doesn't mean nothing. How about your heart? See, they were outward show. You know, a lot of them would just tear the clothes and flop down. But God said, I'm tired. I'm tired of that. I want to see the heart. I want to see a heart torn and rent, rent. He says this, return to the Lord your God. Why? Because he's gracious and merciful. He's slow to anger and of great kindness. He relents from doing harm. Do you believe that? He doesn't want that. The Lord doesn't delight in having the enemy come in and mash us till we cry out. That's not what, what he wants to do. But he will do it. If, if he don't... Who knows? If he'll turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Gather the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children, nursing babes. Let the bridegroom go out from his chamber and the bride from her dressing room. <clears throat> now, now listen. Let me just say this. I'm not a very good faster and some of you can't even fast I mean you got to eat sometimes you have a medical condition that requires you to eat and I've said this before but how about fasting now one man put it this way when you fasted in Bible times listen when you prepared a meal back then it took a long time you got to kill the the, the, the cow dress him fix him up and so it was, a, it was an all-day process. So to, to, to abstain from that, 
meant a change in your plans. It was a change in your schedule. So you can fast from different things. One of the things I try to do when I, I'm not very good, I'm trying, when I want to fast, I abstain from social media. Try it. If you can't, if you can't abstain from eating, stop Facebook for a time. You, can, you might break out in a sweat, but you'll get over it. You know, stop surfing the internet for just, just maybe something. It don't have to be that, but maybe that's something that gets your undivided attention. You know, and maybe that's something that you constantly, you know, I, I get a bad habit of looking through the, the one ads of cars and trucks. Swish, swish, swish. Next thing you know, I'm doing it 20 minutes. How can that be? But you could YouTube. You flip through you. Oh, this is a video. It's pretty interesting. I'm watching. And you can do that 30, 40, 50 minutes, and we can't read 15. You see how it gets twisted? Our God, that's our flesh. Our flesh loves that stuff. It just naturally does. You didn't have to train it to like it. So maybe you could abstain from that or maybe television or maybe music. Maybe you can't ride the car without music going on. That's, and that's all right. You know, we got to have, they play music at the gas pump. And there's TV everywhere. In line, you know, there's something noise all the time that gets our attention. But maybe you could fast from that for a, a, just a period of time to devote yourself to the Lord. And, and you know God will show you that. It's not a condemnation thing. It's not, it's like the uh, God, uh, don't be like the guy that was telling the preacher, well, I've been fasting preacher. He said he had crumbs from the thing he'd just been eating <laughs> in his beard. <laughs> But I've been fasting. I've been doing these. You don't, don't you have to do that. If you can't fast, that's okay. But you can from something. You can, you can take time to, to, to uh, call a sacred assembly. Now, now look. look uh, this is what I wanted to find. And this gets us down to me and Brother Chris and anybody who in ministry or anybody. Look what verse 17 says. Let the priests who minister to the Lord weep between the ports and the altar. See there? Let them weep. Let them say, spare your people, O Lord. Do not give your heritage to reproach that the nation should roll over them why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? You see? Um, it should be on our heart that we could say, oh God, don't let the enemy run over your people and just run rough shot over them and then people look and say, where is there your God? I don't pray to him. He don't answer me. I tried that. You see? And it, if that doesn't make us weep, what will? What will? I, I thought one time this week during revival or last week, I, and I'm not trying to make a, but I told Gene on the way home one night, I said, you know, if we were desperate, the altar would have been full. You couldn't have kept us from that altar. When the preacher got done, I mean, the aisles would have flooded and there would have been weeping. There would have been crying. If we were desperate, if we were desperate, the preachers would have been right there. Every one of us. Every one of us would have been weeping for a touch of God, for a move of God. I don't want to get to where, and I want to end with Ezekiel 33. This is what I don't want to be. I've read this all week long. <clears throat> and Ezekiel 33 is, is, is a, a very difficult passage for me. It talks about judgment and uh, the watchman warning the people. And if you don't warn them, the blood's on your hands. If you warn them and they sin, it's very, it's very, very uh, strong uh, word. But in the end of it, it says something that's very strange, uh, starting at uh, verse 30, 33, 30 in Ezekiel. It says, As for you, son of man, 
the children of your people are talking about you beside the walls and in the doors of the houses. Now, they're talking about the preacher, the prophet. See? And you know, Ezekiel was preaching judgment. He was preaching the enemy's coming. Bad times are coming. And, 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 but notice what the people did. They speak to one another, saying, everyone saying to us, please come and hear what the word is from the Lord. You see, come hear the preacher. He's good. So they come to you as people do. They sit before you as my people. They hear your words, but they don't do them. For with their mouth, they show much love, but their hearts pursue their own gain. See, I don't want to just pursue with my mouth. You know, I, 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 I told Jean, I said, you know, I pr I, I'm trying to pray every sermon I hear. Lord, help me glean something. Help me to glean some word, something from what I hear. Please help me to not be hard-hearted or cynical that I don't, I'm not able to glean something, some truth, something from a word. So what we don't want, what I don't want to do is... Uh, Look what it says, verse 32. Indeed, you are to them as a very lovely song. In other words, they love your preaching. You sound good to them. But it's like a good song of one who has a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument, for they hear your words. Charles Spurgeon said there was a thing in his day called, there were people called sermon tasters. They would ride in their buggies and ride over this sermon and hear, oh, he was really good. Come here, brother. They'd go over and hear, he was really good. Listen. And they would just go and hear these sermons and brag. It never touched them. It never penetrated to the point where there was weeping between the porch and the altar. And, of course, it begins with the preacher. I'm, I'm first to say, if we don't weep, how do we expect y'all to weep? If we, if we don't weep between the porch, you know, how can we ask you to weep? You see, we can't. So it begins with me. It begins, to, I'm the first to say it. I don't want to be, oh, Brother Chris, he preached so good. He was good, but it didn't affect me because I don't need that. You see, that's what, what my attitude could be. I'm, I'm, I'm beyond that. I, I don't need that kind of preaching. Ooh, I might need it. I think I do need it. That's what I say, right? I do need it. Oh, but you know, oh, it was so good. So the Lord said, because of, the, because of this, I'm going to bring judgment. And when it comes to pass, they'll say they'll know their prophet has come. So my, my, my point is today, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go after 7 o'clock. But my point is, what will you and I, uh, what will motivate us since the Lord has promised to hear our cry, if we just keep on. Continual coming, continual coming. Lest by her continual coming she weary me. Would that be a description of you? I, you're continually coming to the Lord. You're continually, you're not stopping. And it gets wearisome sometimes when the answer never comes for a while. But you continually come, continually come. Lest you be weary and faint in your minds. Anyone have a thought? Did I make everybody mad? No. Oh, good. No, I love you too much. Yes, but you'll have to wait. Yes, but not what you expect. Yes, and here's more. And yes, I thought you'd never Oh, wow. Isn't that great? I need to put that on my dashboard. Uh, all of them. Go ahead, Jason. You know, yes, I have. I have. It, and I can't remember. It was a, and that, it's right. It's very true. If we, if we knew that salvation is only going to come by the hand of God moving, Ooh. Yes. My. No. I know. I know. 
I know. I beat myself up because I, I didn't say the right thing. I didn't say the right thing. I didn't talk about that. I didn't talk about that every time I'm around my grandkids. Help me, Lord. Help me to do something that would that would draw them to you, that would lead them to you. But in all honesty, like Jason said, it's all in the hands of the Lord. He has the power to... So that should affect my prayer life. It should affect me storming heaven's gates. Knock, 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 knock. What else would move us to that? I don't want... Oh, God help us. God help us. To, I don't want it to get so bad that I have to pray. Does that make sense? I don't want it to get that bad where I'm, I can't even walk because I'm flopped on the floor weeping my eyes out because it's so heavy. I would like to pray before it gets that way. Right? If I could anticipate, and maybe the Lord is just, he, we know the Lord is, is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish. He's, he waits and he waits and he waits. And, and he waits for a repentance. He, even Nineveh, like uh, Heather said, they were bad shape. They, 40 days, they had 40 days. And God's going to destroy the whole lot of them. That's very really rough. That's nearly bad as Sodom, I'd guess. And, and, and yet God, the, the people repented. At, he didn't even want to go. Just an un, I can't even imagine. 40 days you're going to be destroyed. And that's all he said. And, and he's walking down through there and people are laying on the ground weeping behind him. Like if he just turned around and looked, he'd see the effect of his preaching. And he wasn't even in it. I mean, really wasn't even emotionally. You know, he wasn't. He just wanted to get out of there. And God used that reluctant prophet to bring, like Brother Chris said, the greatest repentance ever recorded. God worked them. I mean, the king immediately, bang, flopped down, his clothes come off, sackcloth goes on. And you, you think, well, what if that would happen in the White House? We don't think it would. Oh, boy. If I weep between the porch and the altar, and if I could have mourning and a fasting and prayer for the for someone, some our nation, our people, my children, my grandchildren, your children, our church family. I'll go on and on, sorry. Okay, any other word before we pray? Okay, let's pray. Lord, I I ask you, Lord, to help us. Lord, I don't mean to bring any condemnation on anyone. Forgive me if I brought any condemnation. That wasn't my Lord, please help me. Help us, Lord, to do this. I, I have a hard time, you know, Lord, with fasting and things. You know how my mind wanders. Help us, Lord, to help me to weep. Help me to weep. Lord, please push back the enemy. Don't let the enemy come in. Lord, you're strong, stronger than any. Lord, your hand, nothing can stay your hand. So please push back this darkness that wants to envelop our land in the hearts of our children, our grandchildren. Lord, we pray that you'll push back discouragement, push back depression, push back confusion. There's confusion, Lord, please. And I know we deserve it, but we ask you to push it back and give us a clear mind. Give our young people clear minds to think, Lord. Put a hunger in their hearts, Lord, for you again. Oh, God, put a, put a yearning in their hearts for truth. Put a yearning in their hearts to believe in God. Put a yearning in their hearts, Lord, please. Let your spirit move up and down the schools, the places, Lord, that seem to be full of wickedness and vileness, Lord, please. Lord, we ask for a spirit to come on us that we've never known before. Pray, take us, Lord, by the hand. In your great mercy, we pray. We ask you to touch us. Forgive us of our sins. Forgive us what we've done in our nation. We've, we've rejected you. We've killed innocent babies. We've become murderous. We've become vile, Lord. We've become vile. So we ask for your cleansing. 
We ask for your touch, O oh Lord. Wash us and make us clean. Lord, restore us again. Put joy in our hearts. We, we ask you in Jesus' name. Amen.